Hello and welcome to Miss Manny History Teacher's latest video on how to answer the how convincing is interpretation A about style question which is worth eight marks and is part of the Elizabethan England from 1568 until 1603 AQA GCSE paper. Let's get started with my top tips on how to answer this type of question. So first of all, you need to pick out some of the key features or details of the interpretation. Now the interpretation might take the form of a written interpretation or it could be a picture. So if it's a written interpretation, you need to pick out two or three details or features from the written interpretation. If it's a picture interpretation or a cartoon or drawing interpretation, it needs to be the, the main features of the drawn interpretation. So that's what you need to be picking out uh, initially. Then what you need to do is to give reasons as to why the details or features that you've picked out are both convincing and less convincing. It's really important that you reference both. If you just write about the interpretation being convincing or just less convincing, you won't get as many marks. You also need to make sure you show really concise own knowledge about the person or event in the interpretation that the interpretation's written about or has been made about. And don't reference the provenance of the interpretation in your answer. You just need to focus on the content of the interpretation, so what's in it, and use your own knowledge to validate whether that interpretation is convincing or less convincing. Let's have a look now at a model answer. So here's our model answer on the right hand side of the video and on the left we've got our interpretation and question. So here is an interpretation from a website on causes of poverty in Elizabethan England and this interpretation is really just focusing on unemployment being the main cause or most significant cause of poverty. We can see that here. Unemployment was a major cause of poverty in Elizabethan England. And it references the closing down of monasteries in the 1530s. And it also says that people that left their, their villages and people were tempted to as a result of increased unemployment. However, this was illegal under the Elizabethan laws that were created at the time. And the people were classified as vagabonds. And if people were classified as vagabonds, they could be severely punished. Let's have a look at the model answer to this question. So interpretation B is convincing to a certain extent as unemployment was a significant cause of poverty in Elizabethan England. We know that. We know from our own knowledge that unemployment was a significant cause of poverty in Elizabethan England. Now we need to show some contextual own knowledge to really access those higher marks. So Elizabeth's poor relief acts did little to alleviate the problems of unemployment which were made worse by Henry VIII closing monasteries. Now, it doesn't actually mention that Henry VIII closed the monasteries in the interpretation. It just says monasteries were closed in the 1530s. And again, it shows some more good own contextual knowledge about why there was increased poverty in Elizabethan England. Now here, in this first paragraph, we've written about reasons why we think interpretation B is convincing. However, like I mentioned on the previous slide, we also have to write about reasons that interpretation B is less convincing. So here we've got interpretation B is less convincing to a large extent. Again, we've given a judgment about how convincing we think it is, as it does not include other factors behind poverty, like failed harvests in the 1590s, or high taxation as a result of war with Spain from 1585. So again, we've shown some more good own contextual knowledge to back up why we think interpretation B is not particularly convincing. And then we've given a judgment at the end of our answer Therefore, overall, interpretation B is less convincing. You might want to elaborate in a bit more detail on your justification for which interpretation is more convincing in your answer. We've run out of space here with my model answer in the video, but you might want to go into a bit more detail in your own overall judgment when it comes to writing your answer. So let's recap those top tips for the how convincing is the interpretation about type question. Again, you want to pick out two or three features or details from the interpretation to write about and give your judgment on how convincing or less convincing you think those are. Make sure you give reasons as to why the interpretation is both convincing and less convincing. 
But the best answers will also state that the interpretation is convincing to a certain extent. It won't say that the interpretation is completely not convincing or the interpretation is completely convincing. There'll be some balance in between those two judgments. You also want to show concise own knowledge about whatever event or whichever person is the focus of the interpretation as well. And you don't reference the provenance of the interpretation in your answer to assess how convincing you think the interpretation is. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a like and subscribe to my page, Mr. Manley, History Teacher.